In this problem solving screencast, we're going to look at problem 23 of chapter 10 in Solomon's 11th edition of organic chemistry. The problem gives us the chlorination of R, 2 chlorobutane. It's going to yield a mixture of dichloroisomers. Here's the reaction as written out. So here's our R, 2 chlorobutane, treating with molecular chlorine, the presence of light. And it's going to yield multiple isomers of this molecular formula, C4. H8Cl2. So I always like to start off a problem by determining the molecular formula of the starting material. So in this case, we do a carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine count. So we have one, two, three, four carbons. So each carbon has to have four substituents. So we're starting off with a methyl that has a, a carbon substituent here. The remaining are all hydrogens. So we have three hydrogens on this methyl. This carbon is going to have one hydrogen. Let's go ahead and draw that in and show the stereochemistry. So the hydrogen is going to be pointed back with the dash. So that brings our total hydrogens to four. This carbon is bonded to two other carbons. So it has two hydrogens. So that's six. And then finally we have three hydrogens on the remaining methyl. So we have a total of nine hydrogens. And our chlorine finishes it off, so we have C4H9Cl. So overall, what is changing? We are substituting. A hydrogen for a chlorine in the product. So that's what's changing. We're losing a hydrogen and then we're gaining a chlorine. So part A asks us, taking into account stereochemistry, how many different isomers would you expect? Write their structures. So this question is basically asking us, where is that substitution of hydrogen for chlorine going to occur? Let's go ahead and rewrite this structure showing all the hydrogens. So we'll put our, our stereochemistry in for our chlorine. We know that the hydrogen on this carbon is going back. Then on the remaining carbons where we haven't shown, let's go ahead and put in our hydrogens. Our methylene has two hydrogens. And finally, our, our methyl at the terminus has three hydrogens. So now we need to determine the uniqueness of the number of hydrogens in this molecule. So overall we have nine hydrogens. So let's determine the unique number of hydrogens. We're going to go along the chain here. So if we number according to the nomenclature we have carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4. So the, the hydrogens on carbon 1, this methyl group, there's three of them. So that's a unique set of hydrogens there. So that's one unique set. If we move to carbon 2, this is a unique hydrogen as well. So we have, I want to say a CH. That's another unique set. Carbon 3, we have CH2. So there's another unique set. And then carbon 4, we have a CH3. So overall, we have four unique sets of hydrogens. So that's important to recognize. And what do I mean by that? So if we substitute a hydrogen for a chlorine here, that's going to give us a product that's different from substituting off the C2 chlorine. So let's go ahead and, and write these products out. So we're basically going to substitute a hydrogen uh, for a chlorine at each of these unique sets. And then we're going to total the number of products. So let's, let's substitute off C1. So let's draw our chlorine bonded to the carbon, and there's our chain. We'll put in our C2 chlorine. So that's, that's a unique 
product there. So notice it doesn't matter which one of these hydrogens off C1 we substitute, we're still going to get this product. So that's one unique product. Let's move on to carbon 2. We're going to substitute the lone hydrogen on that. So it, it already has an existing chlorine. We're going to substitute the hydrogen for a chlorine. So that product is different from this product. So that's unique as well. So that's so far we have two. Let's move on to uh, carbon three here and start substituting there. So we draw our carbon backbone. Chlorine. Let's go ahead and show this hydrogen at, at C2 as well. So the unique thing about this methylene group, actually if we just write chlorine like that, this carbon actually becomes a stereogenic center. So now we do have to show stereochemistry. We ha either have to show it as a wedge or a dash. So let's go ahead and, and draw it on the same face of the existing chlorine as the wedge. The hydrogen's now going back. So that's a unique product that's different from the previous two that we've drawn. So this is three. But notice I said we, we've put stereochemistry in. So we need to draw the other product that's going to result from substitution of this hydrogen as well. So let's go up here and draw the carbon backbone with our chlorine. And instead of putting the chlorine uh, as, a, as a wedge, we're going to put it as a dash. So we now we have hydrogen coming out towards us and then chlorine going in back. So these two are actually different from one another as well. And their relationship is uh, a diastereomeric pair. What that means is that this R carbon at C2 is staying the same. The carbon at, three f at the three position is actually changing. So they're diastereomers. And then finally, we're going to look at C4 and substitute a chlorine for one of the hydrogens there. So this is actually going to give us the fifth stereoisomer. So, and, and that's different from the, the previous um, four compounds that we've drawn. So overall, we would expect five different isomers from the chlorination. And if we count up just to verify the molecular formula, we have C1, 2, 3, 4. So hydrogens, we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 2 chlorines. So you can verify that for the rest of the isomers as well. So part B asks us, how many fractions would be obtained upon fractional distillation? So fractional distillation is a, a, based on boiling point. And boiling point is a physical property. So let's let's write that down. Boiling point. So that's a physical property. So how many fractions would we obtain? So what this question is asking us is 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 based on the unique structure. So each of these has a unique structure. So we have a 1-2 relationship between the chlorines, a 2-2, two, two, a 2-3, two, a 2-3, two, and a 1-3. So note how the, the numbering changes there. So the relationship between 3 and 4, they are diastereomers. So they're going to have different physical properties. So overall, we're going to have five fractions from the fractional distillation. If 3 and 4 were enantiomers, they would have the same boiling point and the number of fractions would be 4. So keep that in mind. And finally, which of these fractions would be optically active? So to be optically active, you need a stereogenic center. So optical activity, we need stereogenic center. And basically, what is that? It's a carbon with four different substituents. So 
So let's let's basically just go down each of these. We'll put a check mark if it's optically active. We'll put an X if it is not. So here we have this 1,2-dichloro, and the position at C2 here is actually a stereogenic carbon. I've marked it with an asterisk. And since that's a stereogenic carbon, it's going to be optically active. Compound 2, we have 2,2-dichlorobutane. Note that this carbon is bearing two chlorines, and every other carbon is bearing at least two hydrogens, so this is not optically active. Compound 3 has our stereogenic carbon at C2 and C3, so that's going to be optically active. Compound 4 is a diastereomer of compound 3, so that's going to be optically active as well. And finally, compound 5 has a stereogenic carbon at C3 now, and that's going to be optically active. So our, our total number in part C here is going to be four compounds are optically active. So to summarize, we were asked to write the number of isomers uh, from the chlorination of R2-chlorobutane uh, in the presence of light. And basically what we're doing is substituting a unique hydrogen for a chlorine.